delicious hot cup of coffee. Mmm. It's so good. Join me for a cup, won't you? Hey there, hi there, hello there everyone. It's time for Hearts and Crafts with Anna. I'm Anna. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. If you've visited before, it's good to see you again. On this channel, we share shopping hauls, create budget-friendly DIYs, and home decor. I am super excited about today's video. I'm taking part in the Sunday Fun Day Challenge. It's hosted by Diane and Jani from Deco Easy, and their co-hosts are Trish and Kay from The Crafting Cousins. And their channels, along with the playlist, are going to be linked in the description below so that you can see what everybody else has made for this Sunday Fun Day Challenge. Now, in today's video, I made two very special DIYs. Mixed it up a little bit because it is Sunday Fun Day. I have a fall DIY and I have a Halloween DIY. So let's get on over to my craft room. Let me show you what I made. But first of all, I want to show you something. I went over to the Dollar Tree and do you know that they have Halloween stuff? Not only just Christmas stuff, but they still have some Halloween things. Anyway, I found this uncanny resemblance to me. And of course, I just had to bring her home. It has a light. Oh, let me find it. And she sounds a lot like me, doesn't she? <laughs> anyway, head on over to your Dollar Tree people because these things are going to be running out. The Christmas stuff is out already. We're getting ready to start DIYing our Christmas things. Start. Some people may have already finished. But anyway, I like to go with the seasons in the middle of fall. And then I do have a Halloween one. So come on, let's head on over to my craft room. Grab your coffee, your favorite beverage. Mm. Oh my God, so good. Vamonos, let's go. For my first DIY, I'm going to be reusing, repurposing, and recycling this candle holder. Some of these florals from the Dollar Tree. I'll use some floral foam. A piece of this burlap. This is from Walmart. Some of these adhesive gems from the Dollar Tree. I cut a scrap piece of cardboard into a circle to fit the top of the lid and one of these LED tea lights. I started by covering the cardboard circle with the burlap. I cut a piece big enough to cover the circle and then I cut tabs into each of the corners of the burlap and then a tab in the center in between the corners. Once I had the circle all wrapped, I cut off the extra pieces of burlap because I wanted to keep this circle as flat as possible. And then I added a piece of the flower foam to the top of the cardboard circle. Next, I started arranging the florals onto the topper. I arranged and rearranged, but kept hearing this noise. Arr! So I kept arranging and rearranging until I finally heard, ta-da! Mm-hmm. You get it, don't you? Now for these berries, when you cut them, because they're styrofoam, you'll see these little specks of white. 
you can cover these up with paint or you can use a marker or you can glue some other little berries on top that's what i did because i did not want to go looking for my paints and markers so pretty Next, I cut single strand strips from the self-adhesive gem sheet and applied them into every fourth groove of the glass jar, giving it a true fall pumpkin vibe. Look, see? Next, I applied some double-sided tape to the jar lid, so when I attach the topper, it is not a permanent hold. Because the jar is pretty neutral, I can change out the toppers throughout the year. The only thing left to do is turn on the tea light, place it in the jar, and snap the lid right back on. And would you look at that? What a beautiful way to repurpose a candle jar. And look at those beautiful fall colors. Don't they just take your breath away? I know people like to use different color schemes for fall these days, but I prefer the traditional fall colors. How about you? For this DIY, I'm going to be using one of these Witch and Cauldron wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. One of these Ghost wood cutouts also from the Dollar Tree. One of these Beware metal words. They come in a pack of three from the Dollar Tree. Some Creepy Cloth also from the Dollar Tree. Some of these Alphabet stickers from the Dollar Tree from Michaels, some of this glittery felt, some Mod Podge, and some Apple Barrel paint in white. I started by painting the ghost cutout with the white paint, giving it two coats of paint on both sides. Next, I painted the front of the Beware sign using three coats of orange paint. Next, I started working on the witch side of the cutout. I applied a layer of Mod Podge and then laid the black glittery felt on top of that. I let it sit for a few minutes, let it dry, and let it harden, and then I cut around the edges with the scissors. I used a box cutter to cut around the fine details of her face, her hands, and in between the cauldron and her cape. Now another way you can do this is you can paint the witch black and add glitter for that shiny effect. But I chose to use the felt, giving the wood cutout more dimension and some shine without the messy glitter. Doesn't that look sharp? Next, I worked on the cauldron using the same process, except I used some matte, <laughs> matte black felt. Well, oh, was that easy to say? While that's drying, I started working on my letters. I took my black letters, spelled out the words, the witch is, then painted them white. I put those letters aside to dry and went to work on my ghost. On one side of the ghost, I spelled out the word in, and on the other side of the ghost, I spelled out the word out. I took one of the pieces of jute string that comes in this package of ghosts and created the hanger. Then I applied a layer of Mod Podge on both sides 
to secure the letters in place. Next, I trimmed the felt around the cauldron and draped some creepy cloth over the front. I adhered it to the back of the wood cutout using hot glue. Creepy. Is she in? Next, I hung the ghost from the beware sign and attached the beware sign in place using hot glue. Next, I positioned my wards and hot glued them in place. Tedious, I know, but they wouldn't stick to the creepy cloth. Isn't this just so fun? Creepy, but fun. Oh, I am so happy with how this turned out. I am loving that white on the black and that burst of orange and that creepy witch who knows what she's brewing back there. But at least we'll know if she's in or if she's out. I'd like to thank Jenny and Diane for hosting this Sunday Fun Day Challenge and to Trish and Kay for co-hosting. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye!